Mm. One of the things that it, you know, really st- struck me this year was my ability to look at my life objectively and see how sex at a young age uh, put me on this path. Not to say that it's a, it's a wrong path, but I could see how it could lead so many young men yeah. t- on the wrong path, you know. It's a uh, powerful motivator. Right. I was blinded because I was having sex. That's, I think that's one of the biggest paradigm shifts for me and opinion changes that a lot of people are confused about. Where I say, you know, I tell my children having sex before marriage is not a great idea. Even though Rolo talks about, you know, plate, plate spinning and stuff. And I'm like, I'm okay. I'm cool with that. I understand it. But just from my experience and my wisdom and what I can see, mm-hmm. I have to assert that promiscuity is not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Particularly if you're unaware of the, uh, the, the nature of this intersexual dynamics between men and women. Mm-hmm. We think we're in, se- when, in love. A lot of times and I see these guys you know head over heels they're bawling they're tore up and because it's emotional tells me right away like if you're if you're attached to a woman emotionally you don't really love her you're attached to her sex hmm. sex is physical emotion is physical to really love a woman is logical I've learned that I love my wife more now because I've been able to separate sex slash emotion from the relationship. And all the chemical responses you're getting from right. that. Right. And the okay. jealousy and the, the anger. I remember being like jealous and angry. It was very emotional, you know, yeah. when I was a teenager with her. Yeah. And throughout. And I carried that into adulthood, but in a, in a suppressed and unconscious way, I didn't know. Okay. And it wasn't until I separated sex and emotion, which is all very physical. They're together. Mm. Uh, from consciously loving my wife. I think for a man to to love a woman, he has to know that he doesn't need her sex. Mm. Otherwise, it's an addiction. Yeah. It's an emotional, physical addiction. So that has been wonderful. That has it's been great to be able to separate those two and to know mm. that I love my wife uh, beyond, logically. Beyond just the feeling. Beyond needing her for the sex, because hmm. if that's the case, uh, they'll always have you by the balls. Yeah. <laughs> and breathe from you. Let me kind of throw this in the fire. Mm-hmm. If you could tell your 21 year old self, I don't know if you're married by that point, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, you know, yeah, one or, one or I got two, married at 23. Okay. Um, so it, if you could tell your 23 year old self the day you got married, one or two things that you've learned since then? Mm -hmm. Like, what would you add to your mind back then? What would you add to your soul back then? Not that you need to undo your past. Like, I Mm -hmm. fully agree with you the way you put that earlier. You are who you are. Okay. I remember where I was going to go with that, but I'll I'll take the diversion. Okay. Um, And I basically said what I needed to say. It needs to be separate from the state, and we need to go back to honoring our own relationships and maybe even bring it back to religion. Yeah. You know, but not political religion, true religion. Uh. One of the pieces of advice that I would have given myself is to have stopped having sex with my, with what was my girlfriend at the time, mm. you know? So if I was 21 mm. and it was a matter of, okay, now you're, you know, you're going to get married in two years, or if that dawned upon me that maybe I want to marry this woman, mm. uh, I would have stopped living with her. And, uh, you know, I first would have had to believe in my mind that I love her. Okay. L- love can't just be, again, emotional. But I would needed to have tested it for myself. Huh. And so I think that's a part of the reason why the old school way of dating without sex was, is important. Mm. Because it's like, okay, can you love this woman even without the sex? And I haven't had sex with many women. So I, you know, but I can only imagine that sex is sex. Um, there's been a lot of manipulation in sex that has destroyed it. Yeah. Uh, I think pornography has destroyed sex for us, for men. And I think birth control pills has destroyed sex for women. Yeah. The fact that uh, with birth control pills and um, uh, porn really reduce our, our libido, reduce our sexual power and our prowess mm. and our sexual instinct. Women who are on birth control pills, aren't, they're, they're not sexual. They're, yeah. they're more emotional. They're emotional in how they choose their partners. They're emotional in the choices they make with their partners. It changes the way they think, too. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. My wife was on uh, birth control pills growing up, uh, okay. you know, being young. And uh, it wasn't until after we started to have children because she was after birth control pills yeah. that she started b becoming a rock star in bed. Like sex, <laughs> sex was so much better. She does things yeah. that I'm like, wow, when you we were 16, you were just <laughs> laying there like a sack. But now yeah. because she's not on those hormones any longer. So a lot of men who, you know, complain that uh you know that my wife isn't really or my girlfriend isn't really into it you know the way they especially i could talk about the way porn destroys our imagination about what sex really is also mm -hmm. too uh know that <laughs> part of the reason why she's probably a, a sack of potatoes in the bed is because she's on the birth control pill so it's yeah. like you're having sex so that she doesn't get pregnant but at the same time your sex is going to suck because she she didn't have it. She can't do it. She's less uh, responsive and less expressive. I think is what you're saying. Yeah. And so I, it perverts yeah. sex. Yeah. So I would have if I, the first piece of advice would be no sex. Hmm. There I have so many different logical reasons why I you know I'm standing by that these days. Yeah. But I would said stop living up together. My wife and I basically started living together when we were in high school. Wow. Because. Uh, her parents didn't have, well, both of my parents, both her parents and my parents dissolved a lot of boundaries that uh, that I will now uphold. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the decisions they made because it brought me to the life that I am right now and I, I love my life. But uh, her parents didn't care that she was at my house all the time. Yeah. And my parents didn't care that I was 16 years old and locked up in my bedroom with my girlfriend all the time. <laughs> So we basically started living with one another. I didn't know myself as an unmarried. When I say that married, I mean we were having sex. And I say to, if you're a young man watching this right now and you're having sex with a girlfriend, I, I say you're married. You're basically married because now you've got that deep, if, especially if it's, it's you know, one woman you're with. Yeah. You're, you're married. So uh, I would have said separation from living together. If you and you, if you're listening to this right now, and you're a young man, and you're thinking that you love your woman, and you're thinking you want to marry her, put it to the test. Yeah. And this is the test that I'm saying. And it comes from religion, which I think is great because what it's going to do is, is what I spoke about earlier: is empty you. It's going to empty you of neediness, of emotional attachment, of the pride, all the bullshit clouding your judgment. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of false pride that comes with having sex yep. as a man. And you may or may not recognize it, but you to to have a woman and to be having sex with a woman, there's almost a swagger that comes along with it yeah. that cloud <laughs> clouds your judgment. You walk out of the room like it. Yeah. Yep. That clouded judgment that made me thought that I was something more than I was, all that needs to be purged, cleansed so that you can open yourself and actually be led. And by creating that separation, those, you know, that time away from sex and from physical dependence in, in your constantly being with one another mm. will give you the space to say, okay, do I really love this woman? Mm. It's a scary thing too. You'll, and here's another thing that, you know, I discovered it's in retrospect also too, that a lot of jealousy will come up, a lot of fear. At least I know I had to purge. Your had demons to are going to come out. Huh? Your demons are going to come out. All, All kind of. If you're if you're already attached with a woman, if you're already having sex with a woman, hmm. uh, and you do what I'm going to say to you right now. Number one, you're strong. You have to be strong. And I don't mean strong. I mean strong in a very manly way. Meaning, I'm ready to face my demons. I'm ready to do battle with the dragons. Because your fears are going to come out. Oh no, what is she going to think? Oh no, is another man going to uh, want to have sex with her? And she's Am I going to lose go, her? Am I going to lose her? Yeah. All these things. And especially if you take, if you stop having sex with her and you, for, the, for her good health, because you love her, get her off of the hormones. Get her off of the birth control pills. Mm. Wife or woman, I love you. And because I love you or believe I love you, we're going to create some separation. In that, I would love for you to begin cleansing your body by getting off of the hormones. Mm -hmm. She's gonna get, she's gonna be emotional. She's gonna get horny, and this so not only are you testing yourself and your own resolve and your own strength, 
You're mm-hmm. testing her also too. Yeah. What kind of woman is this? When she's on the pill and she's attracted, they're very easy when they're on the pill when it comes to their leaning on betas. Yep. They, 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 their attraction to alphas aren't very strong. You know, that's why there are yep. a lot of like social justice warrior women out there that I see commenting on my YouTube videos that I'm like, you just have, you're so filled with excessive female hormones that you have this misplaced maternal instinct that doesn't allow you to see clearly and you're just leaning on these overly beta male ideas of what a man should be. I think there's studies on this too. That This is what birth control does consistently to women is it pushes them towards those nice guys. Mm-hmm. And the second they get off of it, the behavior changes and the desires change and leads to cheating and all kinds of shit. This is <laughs> and like really so if she gets off the pill and she gets horny and she cheats, yeah. hey, that is the greatest thing that ever happened to you yep. because at least now you know yep. before she gets off the pill, here's what could happen. She gets off the pill, yep. you get, she gets pregnant, she doesn't go back on the pill, and now she looks at you and realizes, oh, shit. Yep. No. <laughs> this, is, this is a consistent story. In the yeah. red pill and the manuscript, we see guys that go through situations and experiences like that. Um, something else your, your comments here remind me about is Rolo has an idea. He's put out, I think, in his first or second book. I forget where it was at exactly. But he's talked about it repeatedly. And that said, if you want to marry a chick, it's so similar to what you're saying, kind of like a tet, almost like self-test. If you want to marry a chick and you're thinking about building a family with a woman, uh, you should absolutely not move in with her because of a lot of because a lot. And Sean Smith talks about this yep. too because of the sex and all the change that comes with that, and the, you know the, pro- the closeness and all that, the proximity. But you should not move in with her unless you're willing to get married like in six months flat, like which is super fast, uh, even by today's standards, right? Yep. So it reminds me kind of what you're saying that it, you know I see that's like a I guess a test that Rolo has like almost for yourself, mm-hmm. and I think he's right. I think you're on to something here too. Mm-hmm. I think I'll take a lot of heat for that probably. You know, telling guys not to like bang chicks. Mm-hmm. I'm one to talk. It'll to take him. heat because they're emotional, yeah. and they're attached, yeah. and they're needy. And they defend their ideas and their needs and their emotions. Well, so the, if you're listening to this and you're, and you're triggered <clears throat> yeah. and you want to judge me, try it. Just test it out. Can you do it? If you, if you can't, yeah. that means you're addicted. Don't judge me for your addiction. 